Alrighty, so decided to do things a little different this time, doing a non-wrestling Q&A, which meant you can ask about anything else except wrestling, and yet there's a good number of you that still ask wrestling-related questions. Not this time, dogs. Not this time. So let's go ahead and get into this non-wrestling Q&A where it was designed to have any other questions except, except wrestling questions, okay? Eric Alex Sandberg asks, best movie from the 2010s? I don't know. Honestly, I haven't seen nearly the number of movies that I've wanted to over the past decade or so. Uh, my favorite movie that I can remember in recent time, like I really enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy a ton, but that's, that's maybe a favorite. I don't know if that's best, so I don't know, honestly. WNC Podcast, which would you prefer, a Chicago-style deep dish pizza or a New York-style pizza with a foldable crust? I think that is dependent upon the environment in which you have the pizza, honestly. I'm not so tied to the deep dish pizza that I have to say that rules above all else. If I'm sitting down at a restaurant, the deep dish. If I'm eating on the go, then it is the New York style all day long, son. I'm not trying to sit there and spoon out a fucking deep dish pizza while I'm walking around or driving. So I do feel like it depends on the situation. But if I'm sitting down at a restaurant, I would prefer a deep dish. If I'm on the go, if I'm walking around, it'd be New York style all day. Sue Pete Corvin asks, thoughts on the Mr. Rogers movie and on him in general? I always worry someday that we're going to get some bad story about Mr. Rogers. I really hope not. Because it always seemed like and felt like he was truly one of the good guys. And it feels like we really miss a guy like a Mr. Rogers. Somebody that was pure and innocent, but had the courage to talk about tough, courageous things. He was a cur tough, courageous type of guy, uh, but treated people decently and with respect and love and admiration, and they, the fans and viewers returned it in kind. Um, feels like the world could use more Mr. Rogers. I don't know if I'll go to see the movie in the theaters or not, but I will most certainly make sure at some point in time that I watch the damn thing. Damn skippy. Mounties Corner, if we were to hang out, what would we drink, and when would you ask me to put the wig on? I, I don't know that I would ask you to put the wig on, that's kind of weird. Um, What would we drink? I don't know what type of booze you would probably drink, but I do not drink alcohol, so I would probably, if I was splurging, drink a Sprite. Because after all, somehow it has become the black man soda, so there you go. No, um... It'd probably be water, or it'd probably, yeah, it'd probably be a Sprite. Um, but no beer, no alcohol, just no for me. American Alicard asks, why do so many lower and middle class Republicans turn their heads to Trump's lies and corruption? Um, couple of things. One is there is an inherent built-in distrust of political figures anyways. Rightfully so. So why would they not expect Trump to lie or be corrupt? Furthermore, they knew enough about Trump's background to ultimately vote for him, even knowing that would be the case. So why all of a sudden would that bother him now? That, make, that makes no sense. Like you knew the guy is on marriage number three, and he's had these business bankruptcies, and he's had all these other dealings. I mean, the Russia stuff was out there, so if it didn't bother them there, then why would it bother them now? Now, me personally, I don't know why anybody that was lower middle class would ever support the GOP, especially with their business first mentality and mindset and the theory of uh, the Laffer model of trickle down Reagan economics, but. I could also say a similar thing to Democrats who seem to think that automatically the answer is a social safety net and trying to have everybody dependent on the government and the government needs to interfere in everything. Um, but I really always have a fundamental problem understanding why so many people believe that a Trump and what he would do would be good for the economy. No, it won't be. And eventually those chickens will come home to roost and it will be an absolute disaster. Um, but if it's, it's one of these things like when you go back to the 90s with Bill Clinton, a lot of people knew that he had zipper problems. He couldn't keep it up. He couldn't control himself. Why all of a sudden these years later when it came to Monica Lewinsky would it bother you then? It didn't bother you when you voted for him. Why would it bother you now? It's a similar thing. So it's not something 
fundamentally, inherently Trump and Trump alone. Uh, but yeah, I'm concerned about the fact that Trump is allowed to lie to the level and depth that he does. And it just, it is what it is. He is consistently misinformed. He consistently puts out misinformation. And you have a lot of people that defend him no matter what. And to me, you shouldn't be able to make up your own facts. And regardless of your leanings or what have you, I really get concerned when you have such an overwhelming marking out for somebody. Uh, regardless of who it is. Like, I couldn't imagine, even I liked Obama, I couldn't imagine marking out for him that much. Especially with all the crap about killing civilians with drone strikes and all the invasion of privacy and everything else that he oversaw. Some of the military entanglements he was okay with getting us in. In some ways, he was more Republican than Republicans will ever want to give him credit for. Especially when you look at Obamacare, that was a GOP proposal that was a counter to the Clinton universal health care measure of the 90s. It was. Obamacare was in a lot of ways a descendant of Romney care, which was, again, the alternative to that universal health care proposal of the 90s. So I, I just can't imagine marking out for Obama to nearly the left depth and level that so many people unreasonably do for Trump. I think it's unhealthy. Uh, Bo O'Neill, why did you call your cat Smokey? Uh, being creative with the naming of animals is not exactly my deal. He came out, he was a big gray furball that wouldn't be quiet. Just saw Smokey and it stuck. Damn right. Neil Tan, who do you want to win the NBA Finals? Um, I'd like to see Paul and Harden maybe get a ring. If not them, um, eh, you know what? I don't really like the way Harden plays. I'd maybe say The Rock is just for the Chris Paul factor because I'd like to maybe see him get a ring because of all the years he had to deal with the crap situation that was the Clippers. Um, but I don't want to see LeBron win another ring. Uh, I don't think the Sixers are ready or deserve to win a ring. So I guess it would be The Rockets, but I just don't really care all that much if I'm being honest. Uh, Sam Katz, had you ever been suspended from school? Not a lot. I didn't really get in a lot of trouble like that. Uh, the last time I can recall having any type of suspension was in high school one time. We protested a teacher, our physics teacher, who was making a big deal about girls wearing like the spaghetti strap shirts in the late 90s, mind you, so keep that in mind. So me and, and one other teammate decided we were going to wear um, our, our running tanks into class, so that got us in some trouble. Uh, I can think back to eighth grade, we were doing some type of art project, and it was a Sports Illustrated cover, and it had Dan Marino, and I said something about Dan Marino sucks dick out loud. For some reason, I still do not know, and got a day of in-school suspension. Uh, not a fighter. I mean, who, well, I was so small back then, who the hell was I going to fight and not get my ass whooped? <laughs> kind of similar to adulthood. Uh, but that's uh, about all I could think of, honestly. Uh, Son Goshuaku, are you a fan of Major Pain and the Usual Suspects? Yes. <laughs> Especially Major Pain. I love fucking Major Pain. That movie is awesome. Byron Andreas, what is your opinion on the Starbucks controversy? Uh, it makes me wonder about a company that you feel like you have to shut down for an entire day to teach your people diversity training. Uh, maybe it speaks more to the hiring practices at your franchises to have people like that. Maybe that's something you should take a deeper, deeper look at. Um... You know, it's like just with any other company. Do you hold an entire company hostage over the actions of a couple? Is it part of a larger trend? Personally, I don't know because I'm not a black dude no matter how much I might pretend like I am sometimes. So I don't go into a place like a Starbucks. I don't go to Starbucks anyway. I don't drink coffee. And I don't get that type of treatment. So I can't relate to that. I see it. I know it. I understand it. But I don't get it because it doesn't happen to me. But it's like, why is this such a big deal compared to so many other things that happen? And furthermore, it does speak to the kind of police state mentality that seems to crop up in these type of situations where law enforcement is there to enforce the law. They are not the law and they are not above the law. And at some point in time, citizens should have a right to be able to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. Just because you have a badge and a gun does not make you God. And I think that carries over to other things. 
But you also kind of get a fatigue to this too. Like, can we get outraged every single time something like this happens? Can we get mad every single time something happens? I, I mean, not to sound crass, but at some point in time, it's like, we do we need this to happen to know that this still happens? And the answer is no. Um. Other than that, Am I surprised something like that happens? No. Am I surprised that still goes on in this country? Absolutely not. Uh, will it continue to go on? Yes. Um, yeah. Fucking boycott Starbucks anyways. Coffee's not doing you any good for your health. As far as the story of what actually happened, honestly, I did not pay a ton of attention. I don't know if it was all captured on camera, if it was just the part where they were getting arrested. You know, I, I don't know all that stuff, and I didn't bother to research it, and that's just the fact. And the real truth is, is I have enough other things going on in my life that I've got to worry about. And again, not to sound crass, but if I see something like that in my own life, then I will fight against it. But I can't go fighting every single battle every single time either. Uh, John DiCarlo, what breed is your dog? Well, Summer is a beagle, lemon color, and you don't see a lot of those. So she's kind of unique in that way. A uh, piglet is undetermined. We we think either like a Chihuahua, Boston Terrier mix, or maybe some type of Min Pin mix. We're not really sure. She's small, but she's ferocious. Uh, Rick Stiles, how much pressure is there on Carson Wentz to take the Eagles back to the Super Bowl? Um... I'm sure there's going to be pressure, a lot of pressure to repeat, especially since you're going to have to deal with the thing about Nick Foles ultimately led him there. But who's to say that they wouldn't have gotten to the Super Bowl with Carson Wentz or potentially wouldn't have won it without Carson Wentz? But there's going to be pressure. I'm sure there is quite a bit. Uh, Xavier, how is the NBA championship determined? I'm new to basketball, so I don't know. Um, very simple. Whoever the league and the referees in Vegas decide they want in the finals is who end up in the finals. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. you got playoff series. Each playoff series is a best of seven, which leads to way too much playoff damn basketball. Anyways, especially when so many of these series in the grand scheme of things don't freaking matter. But over the past many years, it has been a LeBron-led team against a team from the Western Conference. And that's how we determine who an NBA championship champion is. There you go. Pretty simplified way of looking at it. A Z Slayer. I'm like you and I prefer black women, but how do I deal with my family because they're a bit racist? Now, I don't know how old you are, if you're still living at home, or if you're under the age of 18, or, as I understand, sometimes that can complicate things. But if you're a grown-ass man, and you are worried about what your family thinks about what you choose to do in your bedroom with your sex life, whether that is you are a white guy and you like men, or you like black women, or Asian women, or Arab women and that really concerns you what they think, then ultimately as much as they are the problem, then you are the problem because you were a coward. And I'm not calling you a coward. I am saying, fuck them. That's what I'm saying. If they can't get down with your jam, and this goes for any of you, ultimately you have to do for you what makes you happy. They can't live their life for you. Or your life, they can't do that. You have to live your life. And they have to trust in you that they raised you right to make the right choices and decisions. And if that happens to take you down that path, then that's the path that takes you down. And you either stand up to them and you be a man and you say either you get on board or you can fuck right off. Or you sit there and live a little bit of a lie and you live like a coward and you allow your parents to potentially punk you out for the rest of your life. And to which I say, fuck that shit. It is either my way with my life or then kiss my ass. It's going to be my way. If they don't like it, tough shit. Maybe they can learn to accept and adjust and adapt. That is also possible. Maybe they don't. And if they're like that and you don't want to be like that and you don't want to be associated with that, then maybe you don't need them in your life as much as you think you do any damn ways. Always remember that family will fuck you more than anybody else in this world quicker than you can bat an eye at because they're family and they love you and all that other bullshit. If you wanted to date a pink woman, then you fucking date her. If you want to put a baby in a black bitch or an Asian bitch, then that's what you do. If you want to mess with guys and that makes you happy, then that's your business, not theirs. And again, I emphasize, if they can't get down with your jam, 
I don't give a shit if it's your mom or dad or grandparents. They can fuck right off and you'll see them at the funeral. How about that? You got to live your life for yourself, man, because nobody else is going to. Period. I hope that helps you. AJ! This is a hell of a transition. What type of movies do you like? I love comedies. Love to laugh. Love, 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 love to laugh. Always love comedies. That will always be what I default to. And of course, Space Jam, because it's the greatest movie in the history of ever! Edward Call. Would you consider having a boxing match with Sean's View Entertainment on the KSI versus Logan Paul undercard? First, I don't know what the hell you're talking about with the KSI versus Logan Paul undercard, nor do I know that I care and want to know enough or care enough to know about it. Number two, I have absolutely no grudge with Sean's View. I have no beef with Sean's View. Why would I want to get in the boxing match with him for the fuck all of it? I have no issue with that dude. I have no qualm with that dude. I have no problem with that dude. He does his thing, and it works for him. I applaud him for it. I wish I had his passion and energy and commitment to being able to do the number of videos he's done over the years on wrestling-related stuff and his ability to get people to talk about him. I respect that. Even if I don't always agree with him or agree with always his tactics. Shit. Nothing for me to hate on whatsoever, so why would I? No, I wouldn't fight the dude. Maybe I'd go with him to the match and have a sprite with him. How about that? Ryan Steele. Thoughts on the new Halloween being a continuation of the original and ignoring the previous sequels? Seems like and feels like a mistake. Because what was it in? Was it in Resurrection where Michael Myers finally stabbed, stabbed her and she fell off the building? Couldn't you maybe say in theory that she didn't die? That she still lived and pick it up from there. Couldn't you also go with the storyline that as long as one lives, they both live. And when one dies, both die. And one of them has to be able to kill the other. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I am somewhat excited for that movie come October. But I'm a little worried about it being like that. Because it's going to be hard to kind of shut that off. Be like, oh, I'm supposed to pretend none of this other crap ever happened. Uh, Pietro Saravalli. Rank all the six Bulls championship teams from best to worst. A uh, best is the 95-96 team. Second best is the 96-97 team. Third best would probably be the 91-92 team. Fourth best would be the 90-91 team, the team that won the first championship. Fifth best would be 97-98, and I think the worst one of the six was probably the 92-93 team that beat the Suns in six games. That would probably be the worst. Um, let's see here. Alex Dredge, do you like the Beatles? I don't hate them, but I'm not a fan. I don't really listen to their music. So, if that answers your question. Uh, Jeremy Adams, who are some of your favorite stand-up comedians? Like, historically all-time, guys like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, um, Eddie Murphy. Um, those would be three of the guys that I think of right off of Jump Street. They would be, kind of be on, like, my Mount Rushmore in terms of stand-up comedians. For me, personally. Carlin, Pryor. Uh, maybe Robin Williams, too, because he was so off the hook and so crazy and so hype. I could always identify with Robin Williams. Uh, Alfredo Regalado. Three things you could change about the USA. <sighs> three things I could change about the USA. That opportunities were truly equal for all, regardless of background, income, color, gender, anything that the opportunity was truly unequivocally equal for all, and that if you did not make it, it was solely off of your merits or lack of merits and nothing else. And we cannot say that in this society. There are pockets of the society that say that we can. There are pockets that can live that reality, but not everybody can. And that's not just a race thing either. That has to do with more socio and economic factors. That would definitely be one thing, is that all opportunities would remain equal. Number two, when we talk about America first, to me, I have a fundamental problem with us spending billions upon billions of dollars every year to create all these weapons to go kill civilians in other countries when we've got starving and homeless people here. Number three, as much as so many people in this country like to think this is a Christian nation, even though it is technically not a Christian nation, let's pretend like it is, I wish people would actually live more to the standard that Christ set. You know, the not judging, the love of others, uh, 
the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, those type of things that are in that book that you, you hold up when you when you yell at gay people at rallies. You know, that type of thing. So those would be three of the things I would change. Horror Movie Review 73. Which TV shows do you think are the most overrated currently? Uh, the one that always stands out to me is The Walking Dead. Like, oh my god, it's zombies. How many freaking seasons of zombies do we need? Oh, but it's about the interpersonal battles and the zombies are actually in the background. And ah, fuck that shit. Just to me, it's always seemed like an overrated concept. Eric Dennis, do you or have you ever watched anime? No, not really my speed, so I can't really say I have. And no, I haven't watched fucking hentai either, wherever that dude is that usually asks me that. Luke Wynn Stanley. Your opinion on marijuana, very simple. I don't smoke it anymore, 20s, different story, mid-30s, not so much. I think it's incredibly ridiculous that our society has built these things in to where it's okay to sell tobacco products that can kill people, alcohol that can kill people, but marijuana really doesn't, but that's the one that we bastardize and we mock people the most for. Like, if we make fun of somebody for being a nicotine addict, it's funny. If we make fun of somebody for being a bumbling, stumbling drunk, it's funny. But it's accepted. It's like a ha-ha funny. Like we talk about people getting stoned out of their minds, all of a sudden it's a mocking funny and it's stupid. It speaks to the relative ignorance of our country, how we allow this police state, this for-profit pr prison system to thrive. It's just, you cannot make a really sound logical argument anymore about why marijuana should be classified like it is. You just can't. I'm sorry. Israel Carrillo. Have you ever traveled to another country? Sure, I've been to places like Tennessee and Kentucky and West Virginia before. I live in Virginia. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I have not actually ever been to another official country. Um, what the fuck is a Mannix? You said you're going back to school. What are you studying? Most likely will be business administration. Uh, MIM Arsenal, first celebrity crush. Uh, going way, way back is a little shorty. Probably Rudy Huxtable. Hey, don't judge me. Um... I got a little older. There was a, there was a bit of a Sidney Crawford phase there. Again, don't judge me. You know, I was young. Um, so those would be the first couple that I can think of. First couple. Luis Sayala, best and worst U.S. president in your lifetime. Um, worst is George W. Bush. Best might be Bill. I don't really like Bill, but he might be the best. I don't know how much that really says, but he might be the best. Um, let's see here. What else we got? James Forkham, would Ken Griffey Jr. have been the best baseball player ever without the injuries? There's a very good chance. It always breaks my heart. Like, one of the rooms in the house here, it, it's one of my rooms, and it's dedicated to Ken Griffey Jr. and baseball. And two of the walls are Ken Griffey Jr. stuff. I was always a big kid fan. Cyrus Seffer, thoughts on Donovan Mitchell ceiling as an NBA star? I feel like he could be a D-Wade type of player. I feel that positively about him. I really, really do. Um, Chrissy Poo won. Why do you like shitting on my goat, Peyton Manning? And what do you rank him all time? I think he's a top five quarterback all time, and I enjoy shitting on him because the media have pumped him full of, so full of shit and smoke over the years that they would never acknowledge his faults and shortcomings. And he had faults and shortcomings. And Joe Del Vecchio closes us out. Will Trump serve out in his, in the entirety of his first term? I certainly hope so. Because, to me, having him impeached, and it leads to Mike Pence, might be even worse. Number two, it means that the will of millions and millions and millions of people, based off of the system that we had, as flawed and stupid as the Electoral College is, and it is, that their will would have been subverted because of this or that. It also represents other things, because if you're talking about he doesn't serve out his term because of a Russia investigation. It feels like everybody around him is really dirty when it comes to Russia, and he might have plausible deniability where it's hard to necessarily tie him directly to a lot of it. Um, but it's not a good thing. It's not something to celebrate if he doesn't finish his first term. You know, if he gets voted out in 2020, so be it. But I'd be fine with that. But I'm not rooting for him to get thrown out of office because I think the consequences could be far more dangerous to the country. And that's it. So thanks to all of you that submitted your questions. This has been a fun Q&A. Let's do it again sometime, all right?